Some people are so geeky. How geeky are they? <laughs> hey, they write articles where even the headline is a schnooze. Here's a headline of an article I read recently by Andrea Dilly. The surprising discovery about those colonialist proselytizing missionaries. Oh, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> huh? The surprising discovery about those colonialist proselytizing missionary translation. Hey, those missionaries who go overseas and impose their values on people. We should just leave those cannibals alone and let them just keep eating each other. It's that wicked to impose our values on people. Andrea Dilly decided to do a little research prompted by a sociologist who must be the biggest geek on the planet, and I'm exceedingly grateful for him. Let me introduce you to a sociologist from the article by Andrea Dilly. Robert Woodbury set out to track down the conjecture that Protestant religion and democracy were somehow related. He studied yellowed maps, old maps, spending months charting the longitude and latitude of former missionary stations. Ugh. He traveled to Thailand and India to consult with local scholars, dug through archives in London, Edinburgh, and that place in India, and talked with church historians all over Europe, North America, Asia, and Africa. Dude is a serious geek, and wow, his discovery fascinating with huge implications for the contemporary church, short-term mission trips, and long-term mission trips. Let's continue with our sociologist. What did he discover? Using wide-angle statistical analysis and a technique called two-stage least squares instrumental variable analysis. This guy wrecked the curve on math tests. He concluded that Protestant missionaries didn't set out to change history, but they did. The point of all of that, this sociologist spent a lot of time, a lot of years, a lot of thinking to figure out did missionaries, when we used to send missionaries for long-term missions trips, they would stay there. Did they have an impact on culture, whether intended or not? And what he concluded was a definitive Absolutely. Back to our geeky article. Areas where Protestant missionaries had a significant presence in the past are on average more economically developed today with comparatively better health, lower infant mortality, lower corruption, greater literacy, higher educational attainment, especially for women, and more robust membership in non-governmental associations. Wow. He concluded that all from Protestant missionaries? And the answer is yes, but Robert Woodbury went even further to try to figure out what kind of missionaries are we talking about? You see, back in the old days, there were two types. Some missionaries would just go and do mission ministry that was just a mercy ministry. It wasn't about preaching the gospel. It was just about trying to make society a little bit better. There were other missionaries who focused on the gospel. Intuitively, we might think, well, the people who set about digging wells or focusing on social issues, they had a greater social impact. And that would be a wrong intuition. The reality is Protestant missionaries who went to proclaim the gospel had longer lasting sociological impact. No kidding. Back to Robert Woodbury. There is one important nuance to all of this. The positive effect of missionaries on democracy and all the other issues applies only to, this is important, conversionary Protestants. Protestant clergy financed by the state, as well as Catholic missionaries prior to the 60s, had no comparable effect in the areas where they worked. Did you catch the emphasis on that? They were conversionary missionaries. They went to bring the gospel, focusing on converting people. Wa and la, that's French. All of these other things improved along with that. Now, is the gospel message you'll have a higher literacy rate? No. 
is the gospel message that culture will be changed for the better, taxes will go down and the roads will be better? No. However, that tends to be the effect, at least according to sociologist Robert Woodbury, the effects of the gospel are monstrously big when we go to proclaim the gospel, not to make the country or the zip code a better place to live, but we go to save their souls, boats rise. Now, the implications of that are absolutely staggering. If what this geeky sociologist concluded is correct, what does that mean for us today? How should we be thinking about missions trips? We need to keep in mind, they're sending a missionary to go and live, but predominantly, the issue that impacts so many of us are short-term mission trips. These days, we are spending a lot of money, people are utilizing a lot of resources to go overseas to do what we call short-term missions trips. Where did you go on your mission trip? Kansas City. Kansas City. I went to Costa Rica. Uh, we went to Mali or Haiti. I went to Nicaragua. Same here. I went to Chicago. I went down to Juarez, Mexico. Uh, New York City. Huh. We got kids, we've got adults. They're going everywhere. Keeping in mind what we just learned from sociologist Robert Woodbury, how effective do we suspect these short-term mission trips might be considering that the ones, the mission trips that have the most impact on culture and on people are conversionary missions trips. Mostly to help people like that were poor and they couldn't like keep up with their homes and stuff. Um, just to see like how people live there and uh, like just help out. Um, we were working in a homeless shelter at this place called Japusa. The purpose was to go into the community and just assist wherever assistance was needed. It was inner city. Work projects where you work on buildings and uh, fix up houses and stuff and then there's kids club which is like daycare and stuff like that. Our mission was to, it was like a work camp to help do home improvements for people who A did not have the ability or B did not have the funding. Please do not hear this as a slam on these nice kids who went to do a good thing. This is intended for us to consider being wise about how we're spending our money, our energy, our resources on reaching people. What you just heard is a description of what I would suggest should not be called a missions trip, but a mercy ministry. Whether we do it locally or overseas, internationally, where we help people, we dig a well, we build a home, that's not a missions trip. That is not being sent to bring the gospel. That is being sent to do a kind thing, to do a merciful thing. And that is a swell thing to be doing, but it is not a missions trip per se where we focus on conversion. In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus issued what we call the Great Commission. Are you familiar with that? Um, could you explain it? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. How do you think we should go about doing that? Uh, um, honestly, I like the whole idea with like, um, killing with kindness. Go out and help people and just be a servant. Um, I don't know. What was the question again? How would you say we are to do that, to fulfill what Jesus issued in the Great Commission? Um, I don't know. Huh. Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know. I think just going everywhere, no matter where you go, whether it's to a friend's house or to Haiti or somewhere else in your city, going there and just having an open heart and loving on them. I think that we need we need to be going to other countries and even in the mission field around us and telling people about Jesus, which people think is scary and you can't do it, but you really can. I think we need to meet people where they're at rather than walking into a situation and saying, I'm here to save you. Just going out like in, your, in a community and showing God's love through like your gifts that he's given you or just showing God's love to them, making them happy. And I feel like that's a lot of what it means to do that. 
because if you show people and they're like, hmm, that person's really nice or whatever, I wonder why that is. Hold the phone, Henrietta. Let's be careful here with being judgmental. Now that you and I have knowledge from a really geeky sociologist and we've learned that conversionary missions trips have both eternal and temporal benefits, we don't want to condescend and judge these kids. They simply reflect the predominant mindset in evangelical Christianity today. Raise a lot of money, go for a week or two, and do nice things, and we misnomer it a missions trip when it's really a mercy ministry, which is just swell. However, now that we've learned that conversionary missionary activity saves people and improves their living conditions, maybe, just maybe, just tossing this one out there, it's time for us to reconsider what we're doing on missions trips.